ultra nationalist Israelis basically paraded through occupied East Jerusalem celebrating the uh, annual Jerusalem Day, uh, basically fascist march. And you'll see the annual thing that happens. Yes. Uh, at the beginning of this, just a bit of a content warning. There is a Palestinian man in a press vest who is uh, being pushed into a corner. Do we have this photo? Let's just look at the photo quickly, because this is remarkable. I saw this. David Adler sent this out. You know, just another image that's going to be in the history books. And he said, uh, I thought it could have been AI at first as well. An image so exaggerated in the dimensions of its cruelty that it looks AI generated. Um, but it's not. It's real. This is what was happening in East Jerusalem. And um, this is an Al Jazeera report that explains that because the Netanyahu and the Israeli government are already turning to expand uh, their violence and expansionist aims outside of Gaza, uh, fighting in Lebanon and violence up there uh, with Hezbollah attacks is increasing. Seems unwise. And you also have uh, Ben Gavir coming out and saying uh, that, ba that Jerusalem is ours. We're taking it, violating norms of, of uh, holy sites that were traditionally there for Muslim people. Um, and they're trying to stoke a third intifada to justify further violence and further annexation in places like the West Bank and East Jerusalem. But here is, uh, here's that Al Jazeera report. <laughs> attacking that journalist here. Okay, hold on. Pause just for a sec, because there's a, a, some graphics down here I just want people to see. Yeah, it's, a it's one of those square videos. Sorry about that. But yeah, here we go. This year, I think there's a direct intention to set fire. Um, so I think Ben Gvir and the rest of the right-wing experienced ministers, uh, what they're doing right now is to try to do as much as they can by any means uh, to stop the hostage deal and to stop the ceasefire promoted by Biden and others. <laughs> So this is just some of the history that I explained up front there, but some of the uh, far right mob chants included death to Arabs, may your village burn. And as you saw in some of those photos, cops just kind of accompany these ultra nationalists and these settlers. This uh, isn't post October 7th phenomenon either. This is just Israel. Oh, yeah. This ha I mean, Jerusalem Day is the day when they go out and harass the people, the Palestinians that live in that area. That's a, it's a lovely tradition for the settler colonial state. Um, but we, we're told by Zionists all the time that oh, the world needs to give us all this money um, because we are facing hate and people who treat their or teach their kids to um, uh, uh, hate others. Uh, and also, I agree that that's going on over there. Uh, it's also important it's to the people we're giving billions of dollars to. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. I was just going to say it's also important to remember this is not a fascist apartheid state. This is, you know, roving bands of ethno nationalists uh, intimidating ethnic minorities is not the sign, or and being accompanied by uh, law enforcement is not the sign of uh, apartheid state. It is actually right. a, the most moral democracy in the world. 
Exactly. Who attacks journalists. I mean, that just the guys in the press vest. What what the and and the, this journalist is one of the lucky ones who hasn't been uh, summarily executed by Israel. There's been hundreds Gaza. killed. Hundreds. Yeah. Um, so that's an update on what's happening there. The the violence in East Jerusalem and the West Bank is just going to tick up because yeah. this is the impunity uh, that Biden has encouraged. And uh, this is Israel's exceptionalist status uh, in the eyes of the world superpower. And I mean, I don't know. I think I, I, I take comfort in what Ilan Papi said about this is the end of the Zionist project or the beginning of the end. But he has then said it's going to be a very dark uh, time period leading up to that end. Uh, it's going to take a while. And this kind of darkness is an example. Well, and there's a vacuum if nothing, if we keep like acting like Aaron Rupar is the one who gets to decide if Hamas stays in power or not. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a joke. Absolutely. Um, number 13, this is literally Nazism. The sense of irony is overwhelming. Um, you know, um, Daniel Bessner, um, who people, um, who has taken the sort of America isn't fascist uh, necessarily uh, take, or at least, uh, you know, draw out certain essences of fascism that aren't existent here. One of those was a, a military conscription society where the entire society is militarized. That definitely exists in Israel. Oh, 100%. And it, I think that's why you see, and I think we still have the same sort of racist um, sort of um, raw material that could lead to something like that, but we haven't regimented everybody <laughs> in the military. Uh, and I mean, it's a, it, it's a completely sick society. And Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries uh, inviting Netanyahu over here in the midst of this, as even some Israelis are saying, hey, uh, why isn't he taking the ceasefire deal that Biden's talking about? Also, Bernie Sanders and the squad adjacent folks not reaching out to Ofer Kassif. Like, these linkages need to start being made. And instead, they are being avoided out of some anxiety to protect Zionism. Yeah, I mean, and it's also just a big middle finger to the international community, which I think America feels insulated from, you know, at this point in time where the idea that, well, yeah, we can protect one of our vassal states conducting a genocidal campaign against an ethnic minority. And there's nothing the world can do but like watch and sit on its hands. But it's important to remember that things like this, things like COVID, it they do reduce American uh, standing in, around the world. Not that I personally care about that, but when countries who we're looking to make alliances with, which we're looking to have like working relationships with in the global South see things like this, it's easy to understand why they choose to make relationships with China instead, why they choose oh, to yeah. make relationships with countries that are not participating, vocally participating in you know ethnic genocide abroad. Absolutely. Um... Augie's left paw says AP is reporting a school bomb killing 33 people, 23 women and children. I, that was the, my top headline today. Uh, a school where in central Gaza, where people were sheltering. Yes, mm. at least 30 have been killed, mostly women and children. And um, I'll also torture, um, uh, torture camps. Uh, like, yeah, just Abu Ghraib. So we're just doing that stuff, too, because, uh, you know, get well, the getting's yeah. good. Well, I heard that they were winding down one of their torture camps, the one in the desert. That was the headline. Oh, really? They're winding, wind, down, they're winding it down. Yeah, yeah. they're going to do a slow wind down of the internment camps. Okay, so torture, right. The, the torture camps get phased out, essentially. And the first phase is, yeah, they'll stop uh, handcuffing prisoners so uh, for so long that their hands have to get amputated. Then the second phase is, okay, we'll, cameras in. we'll let them use the bathroom. You can't turn this ship too quickly. So we're going to phase out genocide over the next 12 quarters, next 12 fiscal, <laughs> next 12 fiscal cycles. Jesus. Dark. Um, Free Palestine says when we can't afford reparations for black Americans, we fail to mention that we can afford reparations for Israelis. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to. I get your point. I don't want to reinforce the false notion that Israel is rep is like designed to be reparations for the Holocaust because... I mean, that's the main uh, uh, public-facing rationale, and probably without which it wouldn't have been um, uh, a sort of so widely agreed to. Yes. Um, uh, but it is a, an absolute appalling failure <laughs> as far as a reparative <laughs> um, project goes, um, maybe like in, in a way that should inform like world history for the next century. 
I think maybe only the most credulous of liberals believe that's even pseudo the reason why, because then that makes it sort of understandable. Like, well, yeah, we're just trying to do like good things for people who have historically been disadvantaged. The majority of support from Israel comes from like vocal Christian evangelical anti Anti-Semites. Bad about the, yeah. yeah, anti-Semites, who definitely don't feel bad about the Holocaust. And then most of the other support comes from this military industrial complex hawks who want a testing ground for, you know, domestic policing gear. They want a testing ground for all the new toys that we're going to roll out at the border. They want a testing ground for all sorts of, uh, you know, brutal tactics that we will see weaponized at home or have already weaponized at home. Uh, we lost uh, Matt Bender, but we're, bring we're bringing him back. Yeah. Um, there he is. Uh, Slop for Piggy says, while teaching a class to high school students on Wednesday, Burlington police officers staged a surprise demonstration in which a masked gunman burst into the room and pretended to open fire. The simulation, which occurred at the Burlington police station, was meant to show the unreliability of witness statements, but the lack of warning and the loud gunshot sound sent students diving for cover in fear for their lives. Seems like a pretty what? bad idea. So a cop Wait. came up with this idea? Of course. That's not surprising at all. I'm just confused by the story. Did, did someone, did a fake uh, gunman break into the police station or break into the school? To, I'm like, confused a, too. We'll look into I it. I think it's the maybe... school. The way, the way they say it, it makes it sound like the school. I feel like I've heard stuff like that happen before, usually by like the administration though, but it, that, it doesn't surprise me. It it's literally sounds like the Arrested Development construction of, of scaring your kids into learning oh, lessons, the guy basically. With, the guy without right. the hand. Yes, the guy without the hand. Um, Joe and Tberg, wait, Emma, the president told me the most recent ceasefire was approved by Israel when he said it was on Hamas to accept the terms. Are you saying Israel isn't interested in the ceasefire? But I thought, but they said, but gosh, dang. Yeah, it's... Uh, Israel's not, in fact, a partner for peace. Uh, yeah. No. Um, put, they are their phrase. not inherently moral, uh, which is a weird way to refer to a nation state. Uh, but that's kind of basically the de facto position of many Democratic politicians. Um, I, I got an argument with a Zionist other than like Israel's a real nation that has borders. It's like, where? <laughs> yeah, right. Want Draw to say them. exactly where they are? Draw them. Is it Netanyahu's borders at the, at the United Nations or are you going to include? Right. Include all the places Most countries occupy. at least have the decency to tell you uh, where their uh, borders begin and their uh, neighbors end. Uh, Israel, Israel is a fake country because it won't do that. I just think it's so weird that Democrats feel more comfortable being patriotic for Israel than they do being patriotic for America. And I don't think that has anything to do with anything other than they believe their voters will respond more uh, positively to that because of the you know justification of like, oh, this is just us helping a, a country comprised entirely of ethnic minorities to exist. But it, it right. always comes across like... I think John Fetterman's obviously the far end of that spectrum, but basically everyone else is only a few steps to the you know left of him at this point. Hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.